Hello, we meet again on Chapter 15, Reproduction, Development and Growth in Humans and Animals for Form 4, KSSM and Chapter 4, Reproduction and Growth for Form 5, KBSM. For KSSM Form 4, the content standard for today's lesson is on 15.2 that is gametogenesis in humans. The learning standard are 15.2.1 Justify the necessity of gametogenesis 15.2.2 Describe the gamete formation under spermatogenesis For KBSM form 5, the learning objective is 4.1 that is analyzing gamete formation The learning outcome is describe the formation of sperm in humans now, we look at the longitudinal section of a testis. Each testis has about thousands of seminiferous tubules. These are all the seminiferous tubules. These seminiferous tubules are fine, long and compactly coiled tubes. You can see they are highly coiled. So, all these tubules are joined to a single much coiled tubes which is called as epididymis. So this spermatogenesis, that is the process of sperm production, will take place here at this seminiferous tubule. Each seminiferous tubule consists of primordial germ cell. Or in Form 5 textbook, you can see it is written as germinal epithelial cell. So this primordial germ cell or germinal epithelial cell will undergo cell division to produce sperm. The Sertoli cell, you can see Sertoli cell there, that is within the walls of seminiferous tubule will provide the nutrients throughout the process. Sperm is then transported from the seminiferous tubule to the epithelial did I miss this now? To flow out via the vas deferens or sperm duct. Spermatogenesis is stimulated by two types of hormone. That are the first one is follicle stimulating hormone or known as FSH, and the second one is testosterone. Luteinizing hormone, that is LH, will stimulate the secretion of testosterone in the testes, meaning this LH hormone will help in the secretion of testosterone hormone. Spermatogenesis can be divided into three phases, and the diagram shows the sequence of phases in spermatogenesis. It starts with Multiplication phase, followed by growth phase, and the last one is maturation phase. We start with multiplication phase. We started with primordial germ cell, or in Form 5 textbook, germinal epithelial cell. This primordial germ cell, or germinal epithelial cell, will divide by mitosis. Okay, primordial germ cell divide mitotically, that is by mitosis, to form diploid spermatogonium. So this is spermatogonium, 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 spermatogonium. Plural, it is known as spermatogonia. Next is the growth phase. In the growth phase, each spermatogonium will develop, will grow into Primary spermatocyte. This is primary spermatocyte, which is also diploid, still diploid, that is 2N. And the last stage is maturation phase. In maturation phase, primary spermatocyte will undergo meiosis 1 to form two secondary spermatocytes. Because it undergoes meiosis 1 from diploid, that is 2N, it becomes haploid, N. And 
each secondary spermatocyte again will undergo meiosis 2 to produce two haploid spermatids. Each one will produce two, so you have four spermatids there. And spermatids will un undergo the process of differentiation to form what we call as sperm or spermatozoa. The spermatids will obtain the nourishment, that is the nutrient, from the Sertoli cell just now. And it will develop the tail and mature into sperm. So it started with spermatid and then when it matured, it becomes sperm. We have come to the end of today's lesson. So the next video will be on the formation of ovum or oogenesis. So click on the subscribe button to learn more about oogenesis in the next video. To test your knowledge on this topic, click at the quiz link at the more info section. Good luck and see you again. Bye.